Alright. Alright, so although I know some of you guys know how to do this quite well. Some of you don't though. And it's really an important skill. Solving a more complicated equation that has parentheses in it and lots of stuff requires making a lot of decisions. And I find that a lot of people have trouble making those decisions in the beginning. So our goal today in this, in this lecture is to create a little box or a little map that tells us what do we do first, what do we do second, what do we do third. So we got to think of ways to describe it verbally, what we have to do. And we're going to create that together. All right, so the first thing I do when I see this, I'm going to use red to solve it. The first thing I do is I notice that there are parentheses. Parentheses, if you're solving a problem, you can't do it with parentheses. I'm sorry, you've just got to get rid of those parentheses. That is always, in fact, PEMDAS, what's the first thing in PEMDAS? Parentheses, parentheses right? So in, interestingly enough, it's the same idea here. Parentheses are the first thing we have to get rid of. Now, unfortunately, we have four next to a parentheses. So that means we got to use a property in order to get rid of that parenthesis. What is that property, Sal? The distributed property. The distributed property. So I'm going to do my little arcs to remind myself not to forget, to multiply both. What's 4 times x? 4x. 4x. All right. What is then a plus sign? Plus. What's 4 times 10? 40. 40. All right. So I'm done. I got rid of my parenthesis there. Now I have minus 2x, minus 2x. And then I have an equal sign. Ah, I've got parentheses again. Ah, not a big deal, right? I do my little arcs. And what's 5 times x? 5x. Five 5x. Five x. All right, what is minus? What's 5 times 6? 30. 30. And then plus 10. All right, so we got to create our, create our little rule. we got room here. All right, our little rule. So rule or map, right, to solving these. Oops. So solving these. All right, so what is the first thing we do? Parentheses. Get rid of parentheses. Right? Parentheses. Right? And usually that means use the distributive property, right? All right, so that's our first one. Now we've got to figure out what our second that, one's going to be. Did you close that parenthesis at the distributed part? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now the next thing, what do we do? Um, combine like terms. Uh, combine well. like terms. Now, you've got an equal sign, so you have two sides, right? So you're going to combine like terms on this side first, and then you're going to combine like terms on this side. You're not going to try to do like this. Right? You're not going to try to combine everything all at once because the equal sign is sort of a, a brick wall. You cannot, you can't just move everything together and just combine everything. It doesn't work. So you got to do the right side for, or the left, yeah, the left side, well, it doesn't matter which side, but the left side probably first, and then the right side. So what are my like terms? I'm going to underline my like terms. I've got a 4x and a minus 2x. Those I can combine. I have four x's. I'm going to take away two x's. How many x's do I have? Two x. I have two x's. So here we go. Two x plus forty. All right. That's I cannot combine forty and two x. I can't say that's forty-two x because those are not like terms. To be like terms, they both have to have an x. So they don't. So I have to keep them separate. Equals. Now I got to do the same thing here. I'm going to underline my like terms. Oh wait, but. Over here, I underline my things with x's, but I don't have anything else besides this with x's. <gasps> but I have two things without x's. Those are like terms. So I'm going to underline those. Boom. Boom. <coughs> what is, OK, so I'm going to bring down my 5x. <coughs> Excuse me. What is negative 30 plus 10? Negative 20. Negative 20. Boom. All right, so how do we describe that? Combine like terms, that's what you guys said? Combine like terms. Is this helpful, you guys? Yes. yes. Okay. Three. All your x's on the same side. 
Now, do you, do you need me to say first the left side and then the right side? No. Do you guys know that? Does that make sense already? Or yeah. do, do I need to write that? If you need it, so feel free to write that. First, left side, and then right side. Right? So does it really matter which side you start It doesn't. But, I, but in general, I like people to go from left to right, you know what I mean, when they're solving a problem. Because if they start in the middle, and then they go over here, and then they go over here, and then they go 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 here, they tend to forget something. So if you just keep going from one direction all the way over to the other, it works. So now, what's the next thing I would do? Uh, let me think. Let me just think who's at, who I want to ask. India, what would be the next thing you would do? All right, so that is a possibility, and that would or, work. Or but I recommend you, uh, what do you notice that's wrong? You, in order to solve this, you cannot have, you, to solve for x, you want to say x equals, right? But you can never solve for x equals. You can never get to x equals if you have an x on the, right, the left side of the equal sign and an x on the right side. I recommend you move the x's first. Right? It would work. Indu's totally right. You can totally do what Indu said. But I recommend moving the x's first because then you have a choice as to what your x's are going to be. If you want your x's to be positive or negative. Like, if sometimes if you just work with the numbers first, then what happens is you end up having negative x's equal something. And that's okay. It works. But it's just easier in general for most people to have a positive number in front of the x. Right? When, remember my scale? Remember? I had three, three green posts on this side, and I had five green posts on this side. And I said I took three from this side, I'm going to take three from this side. So I still had two left over. But if I took five from this side and took five from the three, right, then I'd have a negative two green posts. I would rather have positive posts, personally. Right? So that's what I'm going to try to do. So. So how would I describe that? I'm going to take the smaller number of x's and move them to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 2x, subtract 2x. I'm going to draw my line. And that's going to give me those cross out. So I get 40 equals 3x minus 20. So how would I describe that? What did I do? I need help on oh. this one. I don't know how to describe it. You get all your x's on the same side? Well, no, but how would you do that? So is that the best way to say it? Get all x's on the same side? I think just move the x's to the Subtract the smaller side. number of x's from the bigger number of x's. Move so how would you say that? Does that work for you guys? Move all x's to one side? Yeah. yeah. Well, that could just be move all. Move all x's uh, to one side. Side of the equation. Of equal sign. Of equal sign. Okay, does that make sense? Is that good enough? Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure we could reword it, but that's okay. So now, what's the next step we have to do? Let's say, so Serena. Uh, you want to get the x by itself on the right side, and then you want the right side of the equation? Because just that's where it is. So we want the x's all by themselves. What's in the way of x's being out by themselves? Negative the negative 20. So we're going to do the reverse. We're going to undo the negative 20, make it add 20. So we have 60 is equal to 3x. Oh, now it's starting to look pretty easy. But how do we describe what we just did? So Serena. By itself on one side. All right. Now, do you guys know the term isolate? Yes. Would that, would that work if I said isolate the x's? Do you guys all know what I mean by that? Isolate Does that make the variable. sense? That or isolate the variable, right. Isolate the variables. And I'm going to keep the variables plural because I might, I'm, in this case, I have three x's, right? Yeah? Put a very, put the S so, so that, in, a, in other words, so I'm going to just put add or subtract. Um, numbers, right? You know what I mean or by you, that? You could have, you also might have to multiply slash divide, right? 
like if it's two, if it's That's like possible, but if you did, but if you're oh, multiplying. I'm thinking of another type of problem. I think, I, think, I think that'll work every time to say that. All right, and then the last thing is, what do I have to do? Divide. Divide by three, divide by three, and then I'm going to say 20 is equal to x, right? So there's, we go. So the last thing we did, five, was um, find one x or find x or one variable, right? In other words, you're going to divide or multiply. It could have been one say if it was two thirds x, and it multiply times three halves, the reciprocal. So you'd either divide or multiply. But find 1x. Once you get it down here, I think most people know how to do that anyway. Right? I think you're pretty good at those one-step and two-step problems. It's just that these multi-step problems are complicated. Does that help? Yes. Now you've got a little map that you can use. So when you get these tonight, which you will in your homework, you will have a little map that will help you solve them. Okay. That's, that's it for that. I, just did, I did lesson 31.